Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the program. Uh, today we're going to talk about this newly uh, discovered human migration to Mongolia much earlier than previously believed, about 10,000 years earlier than previously believed. And this study comes out of UC Davis. What exactly happened was they found these stone tools in Mongolia uh, across this five-year excavation period uh, by this international team of archaeologists, which indicates that modern humans traveled across the Eurasian steppe about 45,000 years ago. Again, um, 10,000 years earlier from the previous state, which was about 35,000 years ago. And there's a lot of implications with this new date, and a lot of artifacts have come out and corroborated a lot of other evidence, specifically genetic evidence, uh, regarding Denisovans and Homo sapiens and their mingling and um, another, basically it elucidates another site that these two different species were uh, allegedly meeting and exchanging ideas, exchanging genetics and all of this other stuff. Um, I would refer you guys to my previous video about uh, Denisovans and, and the Tibetan Plateau because all of that uh, that was covered in those videos uh, are kind of supplemental to what's going on here uh, in Mongolia. So just to give you guys a visual, um, this site, where is it? Here, it's in. It's near uh, the central northeast part of Asia uh, in um, the steppe. Basically, this is the Gobi Desert down here, so a little bit north of there. At this site called Tolbor 16 which is along the Tolbor uh, River right here. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see my cursor, but if you guys see this red star, there's a river to the north here, and that's the Tolbor River. Um, here's a closer, a close up of, um, it doesn't include the river here, but, uh, but it gives you a visual of the mountainous region. So the Kangai Mountains here, it's on the northern part. So there's a river here that you can't see uh, on the northern part of this mountain range and that's where the Tolbor site was and to give you guys a reference in relation to the Tibetan Plateau this is the Tibetan Plateau here and then this area again if you guys see where the steps are if you're having trouble seeing the cursor it's no it's upward north of this word steps and it's a lot it's right here kind of at the border here of Siberia and Mongolia uh, near this area here. So again, it's not that far from the Tibetan Plateau and again, it's near uh, Denisova Cave Which for reference is just north of this site here So you have the Altai Mountains up here and it's basically this four corner area of uh, Mongolia, Russia, Kazakhstan and, and China here almost so it's a little bit northeast of this this Tobor 16 site. Okay, so with that out of the way, um, let's just get into the the actual excavation here. So this site again, it points to a new location where modern humans may have first encountered their mysterious cousins, the Denisovans. And again, um, if you just look at the where all the different places are, Tibet, and then this this Tobor site and Denisova Cave, it does make sense that they're they these the homo modern humans or homo sapiens and denisovans they must have met each other here there's no way that they that they missed each other so for sure there's some mingling here it it's just been up to the archaeologists and anthropologists to find some evidence of this and uh some of these tools again they corroborate um some of the genetic evidence previously discovered and i go over that in my uh, other videos um, and this is led by Zwin. So uh, Zwin, Zwin's led excavations from 2011 to 2016, so about five years of excavations at this site. Um, they yielded 826 stone artifacts associated, associated with the oldest human occupation at the site. So these stone art artifacts, again, they, they know for sure that they were made by Homo sapiens because these same kind of tools were found in other parts of Siberia and Northwest China. Um, and what they look like, they're long and regular blades. These tools resemble others found at other sites, um, indicating a large scale dispersal of humans across the region. So right now, 
what's established so far from this site and all these 800 plus artifacts is for sure there was a large scale dispersal that, were, that was going on across this region. So there is a huge migration of people for whatever reason. Um, there could be climate reasons. It could be all kinds of uh, reasons that aren't super obvious yet. Um, but anyway, this for sure was happening. So uh, Zwin, he says, these objects existed before in Siberia, but not to such a degree of standardization, meaning standardization, meaning that the, they're ubiquitous everywhere in a certain strata of the soil in a certain region. So that's what they mean by standardized. Um, the most intriguing aspect is that they are produced in a complicated yet systematic way. And that seems to be the signature of a human group that shares a common technical and cultural background. So it's pretty uniform in, in a sense that these were all, not only did all these tools look similar, but the way that they were built and the way that they were created required some sort of technical and cultural base meaning there had to be some level of stability long enough to develop th these types of techniques and to pass them down through the culture to the future generations. So this technology is known um, as the initial Upper Paleolithic, uh, which again comes from, the name comes from uh, the strata of soil. So the Upper Paleolithic refers to the upper part of that strata of soil that these thing these uh, tools are found in. Um, these led the researchers to rule out Neanderthals or Denisovans because uh, these are corroborated and, and associated with previous Homo sapien uh, upper paleolithic or initial upper paleolithic uh, tools. Uh, the, site, uh, the dates obtained to match the age of the earliest Homo sapiens found in Siberia. After considering uh, other options, we suggest that this change in technology illustrates the movements of Homo sapiens in the region. So the fact that the old technology was supplanted by this new newer technology or the, or I guess I'm jumbling that up here this older technology is supplanting the previously uh, older what's thought to have been older technology means that the techno th there are pe people came in basically there's this large wave migration that they proved and the fact that the tools have been replaced with these uh, homo sapien mark uh, mark tools means you can safely assume that the, these these homo sapiens were on the move and they were influencing the people of the region so the age of the site it was determined by luminescence dating on the sediment and radiocarbon dating of animal bones found near the tools so again this led to a date about 10,000 years earlier 45,000 BC um, and uh, they it's earlier than the previously oldest remains found, which was the human skull cap from Mongolia, which I, I did do a video on that uh, a few months back. Um, and this is, again, if you, were, if you were to accept the out of Africa theory, this is about 15,000 years after humans left uh, Africa. So um, there's a lot of uh, different scenarios you can paint here to try to retrofit this modern uh, out of Africa, modern humans leaving Africa. Some say a second time, some say a third time. Um, but either way, this specific migration about 60,000 years ago, or 60,000 BC rather, um, again, could 15,000 years later, these groups of humans come in. And I guess you could come up with a bunch of different scenarios there that I won't discuss uh, here. Uh, evidence of soil development associated with the stone tools suggests that the climate for the period became warmer and wetter. So again, we have this pattern where the climate starts warming, things you can start growing things more ubiquitously, things are getting wetter, there are, it's attracting all kinds of different animals, uh, specifically grazing animals, and again, humans. So this is normally, this climate shift is normally um, coincides with the human migration or movement or some sort of a massive event where there's a, a, a ton of change going on. Um, preliminary analysis def, uh, identifies bone fragments of the site as large, so these could be wild cattle or bison, um, to medium-sized bovids, which are sheep and goats, and of course horses, which frequented the open steppe. And again, all of these are signs of human occupation at the site, because if you see these things, 
these are the most if we assume what that domestication is a process that could be revert reverted back over time meaning you could you could tame a horse and then you can tame wild horses and you can tame them for a few generations and then say humans die and there's no more domestication going on those wild horses don't stay domesticated they they revert back to their wild form now this is a theory but um again if you were to just go by that then it would make sense that if you see these grazing animals humans were probably there to domesticate at least a portion of them uh, for a certain amount of time and again um, domestication is such a uh, a mystery that they can't even they don't even have the dates right that they, they believe that if you i think one of my more recent videos i talk about um the the uh domestication of certain pigs and and goats in in the middle east and in israel uh about eight thousand seven thousand years ago and it's highly suspected that the that the process of domestication happened more than once for the goat and so if you just take that and you apply it to this uh, scenario here it would fit in quite well uh, the dates for the stone tools also match the age estimates obtained from genetic data for the earliest encounter between homo sapiens and the denisovans um, although we don't know where the know yet where the meeting happened it seems that the denisovans passed along genes that will later help homo sapiens settling down in high altitude and to survive hypoxia on the uh, tibetan plateau so again hypoxia is basically the the dangers humans run into for being too too high at elevation and not able to to uh, feed their bodies with oxygen uh, or the the right amount of oxygen so to speak and it's been speculated that the Denisovans pass this high altitude gene on to the uh, the humans that later populated the T Tibetan plateau because um, again where else could that gene have come from it's not a it was thought of as a random mutation but it seems like now it was a, inherited from another uh a species of human and i will go further in depth in that in a previous video in my denny seven video one of my many denny seven videos uh from this point of view the site of tobor 16 is an important archaeological link between siberia and northwest china on a route where homo sapiens had multiple possibilities to meet local populations such as the Denisovans. So again, more and more evidence keeps coming out linking Denisovans, Neanderthals, and humans. Um, a few uh, episodes ago, I did uh, I covered two of the extinct hominins that we haven't uh, clearly identified. They their genetics also survive in, into uh, the modern uh, gene pool now. So I always say whenever I do these videos that. Again, there are all these different possibilities that Homo sapiens and Denisovans specifically uh, met with each other. And more and more evidence is going to come bear those connections out. And eventually, we'll have probably more than a few points of, of this, this meeting point, so to speak. So whether it's in history, these geographical meeting points, um, the, these temporal meeting points between these two uh, species of human that there were probably more than one and they were probably going on independent of each other more or less so uh, anyway let me know what you guys think about this um about again denis ovens and and our uh minglings between the two and if you've heard anything else uh, regarding uh evidence because again evidence keeps coming up and up almost weekly uh in regard not just homo sapiens and and denis ovens but a lot of other stuff like in North America, the peopling of North America, South America, Australia, just it seems like everything was going on. There's so much evidence out there to be found that the fact that they survived to this day must mean that there must have been a significant amount of people back in those days that were living and not only living but thriving. Um, because there's so much left over from what they were uh, subsisting on, like tools and, and all of these other remains. So uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys later.